Fort Worth police are still studying reports of a series of events on the west side of the city that led to the arrest of four men and three women for attempted swindle. Beginning about 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, detectives in unmarked patrol cars had up to five men under surveillance near West Side State Bank. An elderly man was involved in a card game in a parked car there and later accompanied to the bank by one of the suspects. In a sequence of events that lasted about three hours, police tailed three different cars after the group split up. All met again on a supermarket parking lot on Camp Bowie Boulevard. After the elderly man withdrew $12,000 from the bank, one car, a light blue large sedan, was lost in the shuffle. But two men were arrested after their auto was stopped in the 3100 block of Camp Bowie. They were identified as James Castor and of Houston and also Charles Brown of Dallas. Both have been charged with theft over $50. Three women and two other men were arrested at a Fort Worth motel last night in connection with this case and also another similar incident yesterday. Detectives of the fraud detail say the seven are floaters and are only a few among many con artists operating in the city. The elderly man, who withdrew $12,000, by the way, recovered his money. Police say he was very lucky. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Fort Worth. Before the exact fare plan went into effect on the Dallas transit system, these buses were easy targets. In the five years previous to the plan, buses were being held up an average of nearly 20 times, but this was still less than many other major cities, the nation's capital, for example, robberies than that each night. Well, I think that's the greatest thing that's ever happened for, the, for this system, the only safety for the operator and safety for you know, operating the bus. And you've got more time to watch what you're doing and that's safety for you. Driving the bus part of it. From management standpoint, we're highly pleased with the right change fare, not only from the fact that it makes it safer for our operators and for the passengers, but for the very fact alone that the public has accepted this new procedure so very well, even though we realize that it's an inconvenience for many of them on occasion. And so it appears that the exact fare plan of the Dallas Transit System is an unqualified success. Not only has it generally been accepted by the public, but also it has done what it was designed to do by completely eliminating the robberies. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the move. It may not look like it, but there's a strike going on here at LTV Electro Systems Plant in Greenville. The more than 600 members of Local 967 of the United Auto Workers decided last night to go out. Only two are evident here because of Texas law prohibiting the assemblage of more than two people at an entrance to a plant. Most of the other 600 are at the Union Hall about a mile down the road, playing dominoes, checkers, drinking coffee, and generally waiting around to see what is going to develop. Union official Vernon Polson talked about some of the grievances they range from new money to go into the new contract to a new system of classification for employees on hourly jobs. LTV Electro Systems has similar plants in Garland and Grand Prairie. In Garland, a new contract was just ratified by Local 848 over there. In talking with some of the members of Local 967 here in Greenville, it has become evident that they want parity with the Garland contract and will settle for not much less. At any rate, this is the first day of the first strike at LTV Electro Systems here in Greenville. This is Al Wiggins for Channel 8 News on the move. I will be campaigning under a platform of reform, restoration, and renewal. Reform of a system where government has grown too costly and too big and ineffective and too interfering in people's lives at the local level. Reform of a system where the consumer and the environment take a back seat to this growth at any cost syndrome. I will be campaigning on a, uh, a program of restoration. Restoration to uh, our role as the world's number one military power, because I think peace is only possible 
when one is a national will to be at peace, and I think rising out of the Vietnam experience, we have that national will now. And I think, secondly, that uh, we should not be a tempting target for any aggressive nation to pick on. And I think that means being strong militarily ourselves. I want to offer my services to the people of this district. I feel that I can do them a good job. Uh, being a congresswoman has been an ultimate goal, sort of unconsciously, for a long, long time. And I've always been interested in this type of public service. And uh, when they opened the new congressional district, I felt like that this was the time for me to become available. What do you consider to be the big or the crucial issues of your campaign? Well, my prime interest or of issues is this business of court justice. I feel that we need to redesign and revamp our court system. It is obsolete. It has not expanded to meet the population expansion. And I would like to see a thorough study done on this to see how we can work out a system where justice can flourish for everyone. Well, sir, uh, I think it keeps uh, their bigger men uh, a little more honest. Uh, it gives us a chance to uh, kind of open up and exploit our own abilities in that uh, one of their men is going to be a bigger man than, than us, and uh, we're going to have the open shot. The, they're going to have one big guy on one of our guards and he isn't going to be able to uh, you know come out and get him like normally we would it uh, gives us a chance to penetrate in our offense and uh, set the guy up for the open shot either to drive in and hit the bigger men or to uh, you know shoot our own shot when we have the shot are you finding Southwest Conference fans now that you're in your second year here or as uh, vocal as uh, your fans up in Indiana and Illinois that's, I don't know, somebody asked me that the other day, that's, I don't know, that's kind of hard to compare. I mean, uh, a ball player, uh, he hears the crowd, you know, and the crowd's roaring, especially when you're winning, you know, that roar seems uh, all the nicer. And uh, that Texas crowd was unbelievable. I'm just, you know, hopeful that we can continue to have the good crowds. I'm, I'd say they're equal, I guess, you know, and I'm just looking forward to seeing everybody come out here and watching us play as we keep rolling along here. Have you three, uh, you haven't had a bad night since the three guard offense was formed. Uh, with three guards, it seems that perhaps if one of you is off, the other two will take up the slack. Is this a plus factor? So that's that's one of the advantages, I believe. I uh, I feel that we all have confidence in our own abilities now, and it's it's not looking we're not looking to any one person anymore on this ball club. It's, uh, it's two, three, four, five, and six guys picking up for everybody else, uh, you know, at different times, and that's that's what's making our ball club click right now. Everybody's pulling through, coming through when at when they're called upon it, when they had the open shot. Well, I think the advantages uh, over a period of years will be tremendous because it, in the first place, it removes the shackles of tradition from our county government. You know, the present system has been somewhat sacrosanct, untouchable. But in this way, we will be able to hire a professional highway engineer to supervise the uh, road activities throughout the county. In all due respect to all the fine commissioners that this county has had over a period of years, I doubt that a, one of them has been a, re a real true expert in roads. In this way, we will put our roads in the hands of experts. And also, we don't have near so many uh, rural roads in Tarrant County as we once had. And so this is something else to consider. I believe that we will save a considerable amount of money because there's been a great deal of duplication on equipment uh, in each of the precincts. How are you? Just wonderful, darling. How many girls do you have with you this time? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I wish I had a few girls. How no, it was in Dallas again. Oh, it's great to be in Dallas again. Just happy to be back at uh, SMU and do this annual show. What kind of I'll show are you going to put on? No, we don't. No, we haven't. In fact, uh, I talked to the Secretary of State the other day, and he said they had a letter for me, and I, I assume that it's going to be a negative kind of a thing because there's no big rush about getting it. You don't have you any do? hopes at all. Well, I, I still have hopes, yes. Are you going to still try to contact me? I sure am. I sure am. In fact, next week, I'm... What do you think of the president's I've got, new uh, plan? Well, it would be wonderful if they'd accept it. I was, uh, kind of uh, felt raw bad about, you know, reading this morning in the, in the headlines.
deadlines that they turn it down. What kind of a move do you plan next? What else is there you can do? Well, I've been in touch with the uh, the embassy in Vientiane, and uh, I, I'm going to have to discuss this with the president from now on because I didn't know what they were doing when I did mine. If they would accept it, continue to correspond with them. Eh? Pardon? You will continue to yes, correspond right, with the I will. In right, right. How long do you think it would take you to raise the money if they accept? Well, I, I, haven't, I haven't even thought about that, but I don't think long because I've had great offers. And one from one of your citizens, Ross Perot. Not changing the subject any, but you look you look like you're unshaven and you had a long trip. Well, no, I figured I'd look awful pretty for tonight. Uh, I'm going over and shave and, and I look uh, really good. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up to a thousand delegates, mainly from the southern states, are expected here today to compare notes on catfish raising. The catfish farmers of America feel they have a good thing going. An acre of fish brings up to $250 as compared to a rice crop, which brings only around $40. It's becoming a big business. Mississippi leads in catfish raising, and Texas is tied for third with Louisiana. Of course, as all farmers do, catfish people have their problems. Being from around here, you'd think everybody in the world knew the glories of a fried catfish fillet. But some people up north have been hesitant to accept the delicacy because they think it's a scrap fish. But the CFA is working on that. And on the problem of catfish rustling. There's a fellow that's developed a method of branding, much like that of branding cattle. The fourth annual convention of the Catfish Raisers of America will be winding up their convention with an old-fashioned barbecue. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Judy Hanna at the Catfish Convention.
Tong, how do you see the rest of the season now that you have a majority of games at home? Well, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough. There's no question about it. It's uh, fortunately the schedule takes a turn for the better as far as we're concerned. We have, I believe, 16 games at home and nine in the road. And uh, Memphis of the teams that we're competing with for the playoff spots, the last two playoff spots, has by far the worst schedule. They have uh, 31 games left and 21 are in the road. So they've got they've got a little tougher road to hold, but. Uh, I, I think our team is playing better. We lost a little momentum over the All-Star break. Uh, I gave them a couple of days off, and I think in professional basketball, when you give the players any days off at all, you're really probably making a mistake. I think you have to just, every practice day, you just have to take advantage of. Uh, let's look ahead to next year. Uh, would you keep most of your players, do you think? Yes, I think so, Jerry. Uh, the way things look right now, we have 12 players on the squad. Lenny Chapel is going to retire. He came down to help us this one year, but he definitely is going to uh, go back to Milwaukee and live. And uh, I would think we won't change many players. We'll, we hope to have a good draft and maybe add two or three players, and there'll be some competition for positions next year. Well, is that good big man around the corner somewhere? I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be tough. There's not, uh, there's not many great big players coming out next year. There's a few underclassmen, and I think that there's a good chance that uh, our first, maybe our first round pick won't be an under. On the program of restoration, restoration of our national commitment to be the best. I think during this, this last period, uh, this last decade, during this period of loss of national equilibrium, uh, we've begun to doubt ourselves, to doubt that we were the best. So I want to restore America's achievement motivation to be the best. And finally, restoration of our commitment to the principle of life, liberty, and justice for all of our citizens. Bob Hope is scheduled to arrive at this gate in just a few moments. This is his first trip to Dallas since his Christmas tour to Vietnam, and there's some 200 people waiting here for his arrival. Hope is coming to Dallas tonight to put on a benefit show at SMU's Bob Hope Theater, and those tickets are going to go for some $500 apiece. They're expected to raise $100,000 for the Bob Hope Scholarship Fund. Uh, we don't know how many people are going to be coming with Hope. Dorothy Lemur, Ray Bolger, and Irene Ryan are expected to come with him. He said he doesn't have time for a press conference, but maybe we might have time to talk to him just a little bit.